This is Andy Sticks, and I'd love to share a wonderful problem-solving strategy with you today. This comes from the book called Teachers as Classroom Coaches. And it can be used in the classroom, or it could be used at home. A teacher can use it with an entire class, or she can teach it to cooperative groups where they learn to use it by themselves, and a parent can also use it individually with the child at home. Let's look at this problem-solving strategy. It's called GOPER, G-O-P-E-R, which is an acronym, and let's look at this acronym. So we're gonna start with GOAL. The first thing that the students have to do is decide what they want to achieve in the classroom, and they may uh, have an assignment that they're going to uh, do something in order to craft a museum exhibit and they're going to have to think about a specific section of this exhibit that they're assigned uh, to produce or they might have to write a play in English language art or they're going to be com composing a song in music class or even test for buoyancy in a science class. It really doesn't matter what content, uh, content area that they're in. GOBER can be used across the curriculum. So the first thing they have to decide is what is their goal. And students should discuss this and come up with something that they want to achieve together. After that, they're going to work on their options. Okay, so what are all the different options that they may, uh, they may want to consider? And this is a time in the problem solving process where you do not want students to judge themselves. You just want them to produce as many different options as possible. It is a brainstorming time. So many teachers often uh, time their students when it comes to brainstorming because they know that brainstorming and timing when coupled together produces much greater results. So students are brainstorming, they're writing down as many as they possibly can, and then afterwards it's a time for them to then look at them and to select the ones that they like. So initially they may circle the first three of them and then examine each of those three and then at the end they'll select their favorite one that they want to achieve. The very next part of the GOPER plan is to then develop a plan of action. So students now have to say, okay, how are we going to achieve this goal? What's the first step, the second step, the third step, the fourth step? They may have to assign who is going to have what role in each of these different uh, steps of action. And that's critical because once the students collectively have something that they have decided upon and they understand have communicated effectively with one another, that's beneficial in order to help them achieve what they want more efficiently from the beginning to the end. Now, there are always roadblocks along the way. And if students start to say to themselves, wait a minute, what, are the, what might be the roadblocks that come, they can plan for that. And that's this next uh, section in the GOPER model called eliminate the roadblocks. So they might say, okay, you're supposed to go to a museum to observe it and write down what, you're, what you find on the, uh, the card, the description cards next to the pieces that are being exhibited. But the student might say, I don't have transportation. So students collectively have to decide how they're going to work around that in order for that student to be able to get to the museum. So those types of thinking uh, of the roadblocks ahead of time and planning for them will help them achieve their goal. So after they have come together and they have worked on this assignment and they have produced what they wanted to produce, then they can reflect. And that's the last step in the, in the GOPER process to reflect on how did they do? Was their goal achievable? Did the options that they come up to reach that goal make sense? Did they have a clear and effective plan of action? Were they able to um, figure out how to work around their roadblocks and to support each other in the process? This reflective time is extremely important. Now, what I love about uh, the GOPER process is that it not only can be used for the entire project, but it can be used in incremental steps along the way. So let's say that part of the play uh, that they were producing in English language arts was to uh, interview a local politician. 
and they wanted to weave some of the current history into their play. Well, did that go well? Did the goal of interviewing that politician, the options, the plan of action, did they eliminate the roadblocks? Did, now it's their time to reflect on that. But that's only one little part of the entire play. So there can be, as I said, many little gopers along the way as, long as, as well as a large goper. Anyway, this is just one of the strategies that you can get, as I said before, from this book called Teachers as Classroom Coaches. This is Andy Sticks. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Take care. Have a great day.